Good afternoon, everybody. This is Dennis Wilber with the Active Trend Traders. Welcome to the After Market Monday session. This is one of two of uh, free webinars that Active Trend Trading does for um, both Active Trend Trading members, all types, but it's open to the public. Uh, we just basically do a real quick market review. There may be a couple of things that we're offering for potential setups for trades going into the week. Uh, and then, of course, our premium members uh, get basically the uh, their alerts, text alerts, their email alerts. We have uh, premium training on Wednesday nights and then premium session uh, the final hour of the day on Friday. So welcome. I want to remind you that all the materials we do present are for training purposes only. Traders should always pay per trade any new method prior to the risk of their own personal capital. Past performance does not guarantee your future performance. One of the things that I was at, as I was uh, contemplating getting up this morning about 2.30, um, because now that daylight savings time is on the mainland, um, the markets open up here in Hawaii at uh, 3.30 in the morning. And so I was sitting there looking at it, and I keep my phone right next to the bed, and so I opened up my phone, uh, and took a look at the, the futures, and I'm going, oh my goodness, this is this is going to be an ugly day, and certainly it certainly turned out to be an ugly day. Uh, market pr uh, review, you know, indecision time, or is has the market actually made its mind up the way it wants to go, at least for a little bit? Uh, we'll see. Um, we'll take a look at a couple of stocks, ETFs that are potentially setting up. Uh, uh, I'm I'm kind of liking gold, but I'll I'll give you some pros and cons on on uh, the gold miners, um, and then we'll move from there. So here's where we're sitting, as you can see, along with the indexes, we got kind of chewed up a little bit, not too bad, you know, about a one percent down for the day. Um, uh, had a lot of our stop losses hit today. But again, you know, the, 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 we basically size our, our stop losses so it'll be a very small, small percentage. And, um, you know, we'd rather do that than take the larger big hits. So remember, strategy one is two. Uh, we are looking at, right now, focus on seven ETFs. The SPIES, QQQ, IWM, Gold, Oil, Biotech, Financials, uh, Core Stocks, Tesla, Baba, NVDA, Netflix, and YY. That's where you're focusing on. YY is kind of an iffy one. It's off my my core list, but I'm keeping it around uh, simply because it it uh, it has some potential to you know to potentially uh, be a big mover. And I'll take a look at that as potentially a bonus trade for uh, for members uh, and uh, uh, for you know for uh, basically the uh, all active trend trading members. I will take a look at that before the night's, uh, the evening's over. And then our bonus trade that we're looking at uh, offering for um, our free webinars and our, 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 our free members is basically JNUG and JDUST. These are the three-time leverage ETFs of the gold digger, uh, gold miners, not the gold diggers, uh, gold miners. And uh, the nugget is to the bullish side of gold and JDUST is to the downside uh, or the inverse ETF. Always remember guys that there are four trading outcomes and that's one of the reasons why it is so important to follow uh, a, a stand, you know, follow rules. It is so important to exercise proper uh, risk management. Risk management is, is, is managed by um, or is executed by Letting your stop loss stop losses work. Now, if you sit there and you just put on a trade and you don't have a stop and you don't put your stop loss in, um, then and and the trade gets ugly fast. And today was a good example of how some trades could get ugly really really fast. And all of a sudden, oh, I I didn't I overslept. I wasn't ready for the market to you know open up so far down or for Tesla to open up so far down. But if 
you had put in your uh, conditional orders, conditional stop losses, you would have been, you know, basically, would you, would you have taken out for a loss? Yes, but a lot smaller loss than what would have happened if uh, you would have just been writing it down. And then when you woke up at, you know, 9 or 10 o'clock in the morning and went, oh, uh oh, what, what's happening now? Use the conditional orders and the stop losses because there's four trading outcomes. First, we can win a little, we can lose a little. Those two, not too bad. We can also win, win big and we can lose big. Our objective of anybody who trades a, a mechanical system is to do this. Stop the big losses. If we can stop the big losses, oftentimes these three here will take care of themselves and provide us, you know, uh, turn us into a profitable trader. Eliminate number four. That's our biggest risk. And I, and, um, you know, you're, you know, I'm sitting there trying to say, think how to say what I want to say. Um, if you're not using stop losses for whatever the reason, you know, have a good talk with yourself and journal saying, why am I not doing this? Especially when not using stop losses might be a habit that is costing you a lot that you don't have to lose. And so I'll, I'll, I'll stop there. So, I want to remind everybody, seasonality with gold, here's where we currently are. We're here in the March time frame, pushing through to the middle. Uh, what tends to happen in gold, it kind of drives sideways from March, April, May, June into the June, July time frame. But then we get a, whoops, we get a, uh, tends to be a bounce in the June, July time frame. And, and both the 15-year pattern and the 40-year pattern gives a really strong uh, move up during that time frame same thing that's why i i think that i want you know i'm trying to offer this as a potential trading vehicle for our um, uh, both free and premium members here's jay neg here's jay neg from last year three times gold binders and it does this all you know basically throughout the year 57 percent in nine days 56 percent in 13 days now, I'm not saying we're going to be able to capture all of that, but just remember, you know, if we capture a half of that on those four moves, that would have been, you know, $1,000 invested here and then uh, uh, reinvested it as a compound would have netted, you know, uh, 2811. That's how much it would have grown to by the end of the year for a return of 28, you know, 281,000 or 200, correction, 281%. Excuse me. Uh, then Jay Dust, same type of situation, moves rapidly in a short period of time if we're ready. And so the idea is, okay, how do we be ready? And, and that's where we use our triggers off the active trend trading system. Jay Dust, which is the inverse ETF of the gold miners, actually um, tended to run a little bit, you know, stronger than um, than Jay Nug. But between these two, and like I said, we don't have to be trading them all the time, but just hanging in there, waiting for the proper setups, and then grabbing, you know, a part of the move uh, can really help out a, a, with a person's portfolio performance for the year. Aftermarket Monday today, looking forward into this week. Uh, correction or pullback and decision, that's where I was kind of going towards. Uh, we are definitely back into the you know stronger pullback type mode today. Um, bonus trade, waiting for setups on JNUG and JDES. I'll give you a, a picture of what that looks like today. Uh, strategy one: ETF, Netflix, Tesla, NVDA, YY, and Baba. Okay, and so that's what that looks like. Hey, let's take a look real quick look at a couple of entities here first of all there we go okay here's the Dow uh, guys the Dow has broken out of this little pennant type or, or uh, triangle type of uh, formation to the downside which tends to mean that hey if it broke out the downside we are going you know to drop uh, continue to drop where to well, it hadn't closed below the 50, uh, it's a 100-day moving average yet, 
But if it does, it that sets it up to continue, continue down it and uh, increases the probability we'll at least go to the 200, which that could be uh, significant. Uh, how do we, you know, get kind of a, an idea of how far we could fall? Well, if we just draw a, this on, and normally I don't pay attention to pay attention to the Dow, but the Dow was really, really weak today. Go to there to there. Uh, activate that. Let's move it back over to the breakout area. And let that sit right there. And as you can see, you have to transpose yourself over here to the um, weekly chart. But without that breakout from right there on on the uh, uh, wedge or on the triangle, takes us down would take us down to about uh, twenty two thousand. Uh, on the uh, Dow, and so that is definitely uh, within the, you know the, poten the uh, potential and range of this pot potential move. How far would that be a drop from the past high? This is something always, always to you know that would give us a, a drop of only 17%. It wouldn't even put us into a bear market yet, because the bear market would be, of course. Uh, uh, down 20%, but that shows exactly, you know, how much room, you know, how much it could drop. Right now, today's low, we were down about 8%, so nothing huge. Take a real quick look at SPX. Again, SPX has been looking really, really, really weaker than the uh, than either the NASDAQ and or the Russell. And as you can see, we pushed down below the 50 now. Now that we've broken below the 50, close below the 50 again, uh, we can look for short trades, our, our downside trades with uh, SPX. And to do that, you're going to be look, wanting to look at either buying puts and or you can also go in and um, uh, trade SPXU, which is a three-time leverage uh, uh, um Inverse ETF for S and uh, for the S&P, as you can see, didn't make it back up into this range up here. There was a there was an overhead demand here, fell just short of it, and it basically started selling off again where this big sell off happened. And now we've got even a bigger sell off. We did get a bounce here though. Very interesting. We got a bounce right basically at the top of this candle here. Where it popped back up, a long tail. However, TSI daily chart pointed down. TSI on a weekly chart is at support of the zero line. But if that gets busted, S and uh, P looks like it has some further downside to go. NDX, NDX had broken out um, last week. It is holding its 50-day moving average. That's where it tried to bounce today. Uh, since it closed in the lower half of the, uh, uh, still in the lower half of today's range, uh, I would say, yep, yeah, buyers came in here, but they couldn't push it on up into the upper range. So I would say that was kind of a weak uh, attempt to push this, uh, uh, put the, push uh, the S&P or NASDAQ back up, TSI pointing down. TSI pointing down. Again, stronger entity than the S&P, uh, but also has some nice downside to you know be able to move. And it looks like if it breaks through the one through the zero line, just pay attention to it down in here, which is about the negative 37, because that's where it tends to want to do its bounce thing. Let's see. And the Russell, real quick. Russell, again, it held up above its 50. It looks a little bit, actually a little bit stronger. But TSI is pointing down now. TSI is rolled back over on the on the weekly chart, even though, you know, it has to wait till the end of the week to know exactly what's going to happen here. Um, so it is... Still in an uptrend, so you, we may want to look at what? Look at, uh, you know, potential 1560. What does that look like on a, let's say, the TNA 
TNA chart. There we go. Uh, TNA chart. It's basically just right there at the 50 or even at the uh, about 7242. Um, but we want to see the TSI starting to tick back up. And right now we're not getting that. We're not getting that at all. Then here's a couple of stocks that uh, we'll just take a look at. One, YY. YY went through a big uh, rigmarole here with earnings, but it's holding up above this 11, uh, 1461 level. Um, it has dropped below the eight day moving average, but looks like it's trying to turn around. The TSI is ticking up a little bit. And so volumes uh, at, at, you know, at average, this looks interesting. Um, either if it pulls back down into approximately the, uh, oh, somewhere about there, about the, you know, $15 or even the 1460, uh, 114.61 level um, and to push, push higher. If we get a close back above the eight, that might also, and a clear, you know, um, crossover of the TSI, that would be a good indication for um, to trade uh, uh, YY. Okay, let's go over here to TNUG. That doesn't work right. How about JNUG? <laughs> there we go. Okay, here's, um, and I want to highlight this for you just to, you know, so you're, you're kind of ready to, to see this. Okay, here is the, the TSI. This is an indicator of momentum. This is an indicator of longer-term momentum also on the market forecast, that green line. And you can see for months it has just been rolling sideways, rolling sideways. Now, that would jive with what we saw on the uh, – uh, the seasonality of gold is that um, we would expect, oops, excuse me, we would expect during this time frame between now and you know June or even going into late July that we're not going to get a lot of momentum changes. However, uh, at the same time, we need to be pay attention to our levels of support down here at about 1256 down to 12. Uh, and it's upside, you know, somewhere between 14, 63, and 16. If we get a bounce, like another bounce down here at the 1261, and it does run up to the the $16 level, okay, that's about a 27% uh, gain, and it's it's uh, something we need to be ready for. Excuse me. Uh, something we need, need to be ready for. And again, I would trade it, you know, about, you know, 1256. But, you know, the stop would be down here, you know, at just below 11, uh, 1133. Uh, you can also do this off of the G, uh, which gives a little bit prettier, uh, a little bit nicer of a uh, – uh, chart, especially on the longer term weekly chart. This is GDX. This is the uh, uh, non leverage ETF for the gold miners. Uh, it looks like it's shaping up like it wants to go higher. Um, and so, again, uh, it's got a, you know, we can either take, uh, if this, you know, if J GDX gets down below 2126. Are 2130 approximately. Go ahead and buy the uh, uh, JJUG, JNUG, excuse me, J N U G, and um, and then if this closes back below, I would say either you know moves back below this in a big way. Uh, I would give it a, I would give it all the way down to 1250, uh, 2050. If it gets, you know, drops 2050, I would close the position. Anyway, that's our, you know, the bonus trade for, uh, for today and for this week. 
just you know keep an eye on that. And the flip side of that would be um, J test. And you can see we're just getting to see the just the opposite side of this again, moving at the uh, uh, true strength index running sideways at the zero line. Same thing, kind of flat line in, on the market forecast, and that's uh, that's about it. Let's see, what else did I have? Oh, um, I wanted to show everybody real quick. I'm going to run through a couple of the biggies. Okay, Facebook got whacked today really nicely. Uh, it has dropped both. I mean, it it took out both the 50, that's the L line. And the 100, and came to stop. It came to rest just on top of the 200. Is it going to bounce from there? I think we would want to trade uh, uh, Facebook right now. Trade it as moving up into these moving averages, or even the 100-day moving average gets there, stalls. That would be a, a signal to try to you know get into a short trade on Facebook if if you like to tr you know do short trade. The other one I'll t share with you is Netflix. Netflix. Um, Hanging in there pretty good. Um, actually, for one of the FANG stocks, it is um, basically it has dropped down holding above the 20-day moving average. TSI is rolling down. Looks like the day, weekly TSI wants to cross and t over and fall also. But I would say, where is it likely to go? Well, either 300 or, or this area right here at the 287. Those are my two trigger targets for both of those. So with that, guys, that will finish us up for today. Uh, I'm glad to be back in the saddle. Looking forward to uh, uh, continuing to um, uh, provide insight. And uh, if if it looks like we have a trade on the um, on um, JNUG, I will send out a, a, an email alert. To everybody, of course, the uh, premium members, you will get your uh, uh, text message alert also to go with that. But it's getting really close to uh, potentially making a move on JNUG, J -Nug, excuse me, J-N-U-G. Okay, everybody, have a great day. God bless, and we'll talk to you later this week. Aloha.